So, beginning of the axon, resting membrane potential about minus 70. So, the voltage-gated sodium channels are closed. Now remember, your voltage-gated sodium channels have two doors, right? Okay, I've got to draw those a little bigger. Okay, so this would be, this would be a section along the axon here. Alright. Voltage gated subject. Front door is closed, back door is open. Activation gate, inactivation gate. Front door, back door. Okay. So, voltage gated sodium channels, like that. That's right here. If you get a graded potential strong enough to get to the threshold, to depolarize that initial segment, that right there at the axon pillock very beginning of the axon. To minus 60, then what will happen is this first sodium channel will open. Minus 60 threshold, voltage-gated sodium channel opens, sodium rushes in. Right? Okay, so positive right at the end, the membrane depolarizes. So it's sitting here at minus 70, sodium rushed in. Once I get up to about plus 30, remember these, these gates, these channels are voltage regulated, right? Voltage gated channels. So once I get to about plus 30, what happens is the back door, the inactivation gate, closes.
60, sodium channel opens. Sodium rushes in, that depolarizes the middle. Once it gets to about plus 30,
sodium channel. The activation gate is open. The inactivation gate is open. And sodium does what? Sodium ions enter cell. rushing in, the cell's getting more and more positive, right there where that first channel is, right there, right here. Remember, we got to remember where we are. We're right here. Okay? Well, hang on. We are. Now, um, at this point, once you get to about plus 30, what happens to the sodium channel? Well, then it closes, but how does it close? The yeah. The activation gate Closes. The activation gate is still open, but the inactivation gate is closed. The back door closes. Thank you. Like that. You're like that. Okay. Sorry. That's right. I changed it. Like that. Right? And the potassium gate opens. Not until 40, though. No, no, no. The potassium gate opens at plus 30. Oh, that's right. At the same time, the sodium channel inactivates, the potassium channel opens. And once the potassium channel opens, what happens? Potassium the potassium channel opens. Yep, exits the cell. And that's going to cause the cell to do what? Repolarize. When it repolarizes to about minus 40, It just has to get, it has to basically, 
threshold. Get to threshold. This one has to get to threshold, so that one will open. And as soon as it gets to threshold, the next one opens. And as, as this signal, as this action potential propagates, travels down, then all of these have to, once they get started, they've got to go through all these steps before they can get started. Does that make sense? That's one reason why the signal only goes that way. Because for this sodium channel to get stimulated again, to open up again, it has to go through this whole process. It has to inactivate and then reset back to its front door, closed back door open. But once this first voltage-gated sodium channel opens, then the rest of them are going to open. Because as soon as it opens, the sodium's going to run in. That's going to depolarize the membrane, which is going to open the next one. Yada, yada, yada. And, and the thing you have to remember is all of these are voltage-gated. So once one opens, the rest of them open. So this, the, each time that happens, it's like, it's like momentum to get it down. It creates momentum to keep it going. So it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, the signal doesn't. The signal does not attenuate. It doesn't get weaker. That's correct. That's what I was going to That's say. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know, it's like cable TV. If you, you can't run a coax cable from your house three miles down the road because the signal gets weaker. Right. Action potential signals do not attenuate. That's the word for it. Doesn't get weaker. Graded potentials do. Okay. But they would if you didn't have that process going on. If, if you didn't have, if these channels were not voltage gated, right. then yes. Now, this gets, this brings me, I'm also a great question, this brings me to the point, um, the fact that I said that once the signal gets started, it goes that direction, it can't back up because all of the sodium channels behind where the signal is haven't reset yet. Okay. Some, of them are, some of them will be closed, some of them will be closing, some of them will be inactivated. Does that make sense? And so what you have is something called a refractory period. The refractory period is um, the period of time where you can't generate another action potential. The reason is because You've got to get all of these things, at least you've got to get this first one reset before it's going to respond. I don't care what kind of graded potential you produce here. If that sodium channel is in its inactivated state, it's not going to respond. If it's already open, or it's, in other words, if the sodium channel is like this, if it's already open, it can't respond anymore, right? Or if it's like this, uh, this is open and this is closed. That's the inactive form, right? The sodium channel can only respond when it's in its resting state. And resting state means the front door is closed and the back door is open. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, where, when, at what voltage? Does the sodium channels re do the sodium channels reset? Yeah, about minus 40, right? So that means that this membrane has got to get repolarized at least to minus 40 before you're going to be able to generate another action potential. Does that make sense? And that's what I mean by the refractory period ends when repolarization is all it doesn't have to go all the way back down to minus 70, but it's got to get close. Because the sodium channels have to reset. They have to be back in their ready state. All right, now, you have what's called the absolute refractory period. Regardless of how strong of a signal you, you produce, how big of a great potential, how big of a stimulus, the sodium channels are either here or they're already here. So it doesn't matter what you do to that cell, it's not going to respond again. It absolutely will not generate another action potential. Okay. You've got absolute, which is this one. And then you have what's called the relative refractory period. What's going on there is you, you've repolarized to about minus 40. So the sodium channels are ready. They can respond again. But your potassium channels aren't yet closed. 
Tensor channels don't close till about one. Minus 80, minus 9, depending on which circuit textbook you're reading. <laughs> right? Okay. In other words, the tensor channels don't close until the cell becomes hyperforward. Right? Now, if the cell is hyperpolarized, that means it's going to take me a stronger, in other words, if my cell is at minus 80 as opposed to minus 70, it's going to take more energy, more signal, to get it to minus 60. And so the relative refractory period means that I can generate another X potential, but the stimulus has got to be strong. You can do it because the sodium channels are what? Well, they're not active, they're ready. They're, ready. they're reset. But it takes a stronger signal because you've got to overcome the fact that, that what? The potassium channels are still open, right? Potassium channels are still open. So potassium's leaking out. That means that the cell's getting hyperpolarized. So the grading potential's got to be strong enough to overcome that. You're, you're further down in the hole. Okay? You've got to send more, so you got to open more, more sodium channels here. Basically, you've got to neutralize the potassium channels running out and then keep sending sodium in to get that channel to open again. The voltage gated channel. Lightly touching yourself is going to generate a small graded potential. Small stimulus, small graded potential. Smacking myself, large stimulus, large graded potential. Now, but whether it's a small graded potential or a large graded potential, it, if both of those reach threshold, I'm going to get the same size action potential. Action potentials are either on or off. They're not graded. They're not sized. They're the same size. Well, now, wait a minute. How do I understand that this is nice and this is not? It's how fast the action potentials are sent. It's not the size of the action potential. It's the speed. It's the speed. It's the frequency. One action potential per second as opposed to a thousand action potentials per second. The, the frequency is interpreted by your brain as the strength of the initial stimulus. Because action potentials are either you either get one or you don't get one. You don't get a big one or a little one. Graded potentials are big or little. But as long as you get the minimal amount to get the threshold, you're going to get an action potential. Now, if you have a huge bunch of graded potentials, that means you're going to get action potentials faster. The sustained depolarization generated by a strong graded potential increases the frequency of action potential generation. All of this happens right there. So how do I get, once I get it started, I told you it goes all the way to the end, right? How does that happen? Okay. The propagation or the movement of the action potential can happen two ways. In an unmyelinated axon, an axon that doesn't have a myelin sheet, where, whether it's oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system or what kind of cell in the peripheral makes the myelin sheet? Which one cell? Good. Okay. In an unmyelinated axon, you have what's called continuous action potential propagation or continuous propagation. Now, what happens is that means that every single voltage gated sodium channel along the entire membrane has to go through this process. In a myelinated axon, that's called it's called saltatory. In a myelinated axon, the only part of the axon that's exposed to the extracellular fluid are the nodes of Rundle. I just lost them. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and so that means that it's almost like it's not really what happens, but it's almost like that action potential jumps from node to node to node to node. And that's why it's faster. Let me give an example. 
when I walk across the floor, my feet do not touch every piece of the floor, right? This would be saltatory, right? If I were doing um, a drug test, I think I can barely do that somewhere. That It's going to take me much longer to get across the floor, right? Because I've got to touch every piece of the floor. That's continuous. And that's why action potential propagation is slower in unmyelinated axons than myelinated. Okay. One other factor affects propagation speed. The, the bigger around, the larger the diameter of the axon, the faster it moves. So whether it's myelinated or not, and how big around the axon is. So if you look at your, your um, somatic motor neurons, those are the ones that start in the spinal cord and go all the way down to your thing, those are the fastest. Think about your reflexes, how fast they are. Okay? So position, balance, touch, pressure, and, and movement, okay, those are the fastest. Okay. Fortunately, these are a little bit slower. They're still myelinated, but they're slower. Remember we talked about how your muscle can move before you even realize the pain? One reason is you've got many synapses, you have a synaptic delay. The other reason is the neurons are smaller, and so they're a little bit slower. And then your visceral motor, those tend to be unmyelinated, like core four, which is why you're full before you know you're full. That's why you eat too much. That's why you eat too much. Okay. Why do the action potentials not move backwards? Because this is in this is refractory. This is in the refractory period. And that's why you can only go one way. Because everything behind it is in refractory. 